Hello lovely people and welcome to Feminist Finishes. I am Amisi Kwesin and in today's video we are going to talk about dealing with loss. Let's get right into the video. 2020 has been a very, very, very sad year for everybody. Everybody lost one thing or another. People lost their jobs, people lost their family, their friends. Even I lost a lot of people too. All in all, we still had our good times, we still had our blessings, we still had our beautiful moments and our awesome moments. We still have our awesome moments. And for that, for that, we are entirely grateful to God and to everybody and everything. So today we are here to talk about dealing with loss. Dealing with loss of a loved one, loss of a job, loss of a friend. There's no right or wrong way to deal with loss of anybody. Or anything now what people term it as grief so you're grieving over something so what is grief grief to my understanding is love with nowhere to go love with nowhere to go as in the sense that I love my I love my friend right I love her so much but she died so the love I was going to express to her for the years to come and even during this year I don't know where to put it. I don't know who to give it to. I don't know what to do with that kind of love. And for that reason, I tend to cry. I tend to miss her. I tend to want to see her. But then I can't. The problem is not really about the loss of my friend, per se. It's about the change it's going to cause in my life. People die every day. People die every day. But why doesn't it make a difference? Why doesn't it affect me when people die? Because the people who die have no change in my life. So if I lose my friend, I will grieve because maybe every day when I wake up, I see her first. When I go to sleep, I see her last, talk on the phone. But as, days goes, as the day goes by, I won't be able to talk to her anymore. So there will be a change in my routine because of her not being there again. I hope you understand where I'm starting from. So basically, it's mainly because of the change in our lives. That's why we mostly grieve. So in conclusion, we grieve the incompleteness that we feel. The hole that the person has left in our hearts or in our lives is the reason why we grieve. Oh, why did you leave me so soon? Oh, why, why, why? Basically, that's what we mostly say. Yeah, I, I've said some before. So. so what do we do when we are grieving? How do we bear with grief? Okay, so if you Google how to bear with grief, you get a long list of things um, I googled it one day, I think early August. They'll tell you acceptance, blah, 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 a whole lot of things. But to me, it didn't work for me. Not because I didn't, I didn't believe in it or anything, but I just felt that like that was not the right thing to do. I don't have to be confined in my own space, even though I have to be confined in my own space. I don't know if you're getting where I'm getting to, but how did I deal with my grief? Or how to deal with grief. I think you, you have to reach out to people. Reach out. If you don't even want to talk at that moment, just let people be around you so you're not doing things stupid. Don't, don't be alone at that point in time. All right? I know it will be hard for you to talk to somebody, but try to talk to at least one person. See a pastor. See a spiritual father. See a friend. See a counselor. See a therapist, if necessary. Write. Do what you like doing. If you like to write, write. If you like to draw, draw. If you like to dance, dance. If you like to exercise, exercise. Whatever makes you happy on a regular day, just just do it. You might think that what you are doing is not fair, the person is dead and everything, but then life still moves on. So then get up and do what you love to do. It's not a bad thing that you are, you are dancing when your friend is dead. It's not a bad thing that you are drawing when your friend is dead. You can put all that pain into a, a piece and write a very beautiful poem. You can put all that pain on a, on a canvas and draw a very, very beautiful picture. You can put all that pain and get the right body shape that you've been, you've been dreading, but you don't even know that you can actually get. Do what makes you happy. People will drink and people will smoke and people will take weed and cocaine and everything. I'm not for that motion. Not because of the sin aspect of it anyway, but because of the fact that when you finish drinking and smoking and doing everything and then the smoke fades away, you will still come back to cry and pick another cigarette and smoke again. Doesn't mean you continue to smoke till you die too. 
No. So let drinking be out of the subject. Let smoking be out of the subject. Don't do things that will later let it come back to you. All right? Don't kill that memory. Somebody will say, forget about him. Let the, let the dead rest in peace. No. You can't kill the memory of that person. Pass on the person's legacy. Let the person, let the person be known. Let the person, the person's life, the person's life matters as well. Even if the person is dead. So, I lost my friend. I didn't kill her memory. I posted every Thursday on my WhatsApp status. I look at her picture and I tell people about her because she's a very nice person and her name must not die even though she is dead. So I'm passing on her legacy. I am passing on her life. I'm not killing her memory because she still lives even though I don't see her. Um, one thing we tend to do is ask why. God, why me? Why did my friend die? Why so soon? Why so early? She's such a young person. She was just 18. Why is she gone? Where? God, why are you doing this to me? God. I did it. We all do it. But it's not the right thing to do. If not your friend, then who should die? If you also have died, she would have said the same thing. Maybe you are, you are strong enough to take the death of your friend and your friend taking your death. So she had to leave you or he had to leave you. Do you get, God won't give you something that you cannot handle. He does all things in the right time and the right purpose. And according to your plan and your destiny, he will not leave you to go astray and he will not hurt you. So don't try not to say why. Try not to question his actions. Try not to. I know at that moment you want to, but then try. Try not to. Try not to say why God, why not me. If not you, then who? Who should go through the pain that you are going through? It's yours. Handle it well. Build up on the pain and build up on the anger and build up on the loss and everything. Now, I'm saying loss as a person. No. Loss can be me also losing my leg. For example, I cut my leg off. I will grieve because the love of my leg, right, has nowhere to go. So, I will try to shout and cry and say, why did you cut off my leg? Why? Why? Why not your leg? Whose leg should they go and cut? Why not you losing your job? Who should lose their job? Why not you? Why should they be Amma and not you? Why? You think you are better than Amma or you think you are, you are perfect or something? No. It's because you can handle it. You can handle everything. All right? And then give it a process. So then don't rush it. If you are joined today, draw today. if you are... If you're dancing tomorrow, dance it out. If you even want to laugh it out, laugh it out. You owe nobody any explanation how you want to grieve. It's a long process and it's up to you to take it a day at a time. Remember, we don't rush. Um, how to support a grieving person. <laughs> so, people have died. I've seen people lose loved ones and friends and family and everything. And we tend to say, oh... God gives and God takes. Out of that, you shall return, and then that, out of that, you are formed, and that, you shall return. Or a time to live and a time to die. Right now, I know that a time to be a time to die. Right now, I know that that I will return to. Right now, I know all those things. But when the person actually goes, or when I actually lose that leg of mine, or when I, I don't know that a time to live, a time to die, a time to gain, a time to lose. I don't know that. I don't want to hear that. What I want to hear is, he's four days later, he's still on time. What I want to hear is. He's a God who can raise people from the dead. What I want to hear is he makes the impossible possible. So my friend is going to come back to life or my leg is going to grow back or my finger is going to grow back or I'm going to get a job, a better job. That's what I want to hear at that point in time. Not you quoting sad scriptures and then telling me that I shouldn't do this and that I shouldn't cry because it's the time and season and all that. Look, I know that on a regular day, but at that point, I don't want to hear that. Give me space. I don't give me space. For example, stay with me, but don't overstay. I need people, people who are griefing, need people around them. People who are griefing need the company of others. Not to come and talk and make me, but just to be there. Even if it's just to hug me and tell me that it's all going to be okay. Or tell me that I'm here for you. Let's press your love to me or something. But don't come and sit around it. Be quoting Bible scriptures on how to bed. No, that is, not, that is something that you don't have to do because that person doesn't want to hear that at that point in time. 
So, um, last, lastly, you have to pray for them. Prayer has everything. But after you pray for them, remember to pray with them. Because praying with somebody has a different impact. It makes them that, oh my God, you are here for me. Oh my God, you care about me. You think about me. He took time out of your day to come and sit with me and pray with me. And that does a lot in a person's life. If the person is not a Christian, let the person understand that so far as you believe, it's going to work. So pray for the person and pray with the person. and Give the person space, but be available for the person as well. Remember, no quoting of long, long scriptures and saying, out of that, it's our return. It's a no-no. Pass on the legacy of your loved one. Don't kill the person's memory. And stay blessed. So meet again next week Friday. I believe that one way or another you got something from this video and I'm sorry for everything that you've been through this year and the years before. The Lord continue to be our strength and our guide. 